How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and I'm about to spill the beans on Sebastiana Pavoniana, a little bean also known as the Mexican jumping bean. They only grow in a 30 by 100 mile stretch in Mexico, but thanks to modern retail, you can find them anywhere. When I was a kid growing up, I used to get a lot of these, and in my parents' generation, they were really popular. So uh, come in for a closer look, guys, and I'll tell you all about the jumping bean. Remember these guys? Mexican jumping beans? Things are awesome. There's a little uh, grub in there. And as it moves around, it moves the bean. And I learned that when I was a kid that if you warm them up, they hop more. They move around more. Now, they always come in this cool little container, and that allows you to view them and everything else. Earlier in the year, the moth actually breeds, it lays a single egg in each bean, and that egg develops into a tiny little grub. And then the grub hollows out the inside of the bean, creates a network of silk that suspends it in the middle of the bean, and then hanging from those silken threads, it begins to develop. Now, these beans are often brown or slightly greenish on the outside, and each one has that characteristic pale spot in the middle, which I don't know why, but I really get a kick out of it. Now, once they emerge, they'll cut open a little door, which is what you see here. I just think the doors are awesome looking, pretty cool. And there, is the hollow cavity within. Now I've got some other footage of these guys and I'll let you see, uh, I'll show you that in a second. But before I do, check this out. So these aren't actually beans, they are segments of a seed known as carpels. And it takes three of those carpels to form one seed, like this. They go together like that and you might have up to one grub for each segment. This is one of the exoskeletons, or the husk, from the uh, tiny little grub. As you can see, there's little marks where the wings were developing. And that's where it split open and the moth, the adult moth emerged. Not unlike any other grub that you find. And if you peer even closer, you'll see the little antenna there to the left, going over. That's where the antenna developed. And uh, there's the abdomen. And there's the part right there that split open and the adult moth emerges and flies away to mate and start a new generation of jumping beans. There you go. This is the adult form of the jumping bean. It is a grayish brown moth and as you can tell they're really fast. I actually tried filming one outside of the container and it flew away. Which is okay because their host plant can't be found anywhere in North America and they wouldn't be able to find a mate in order to reproduce anyways. I actually feel bad for them because we buy them for entertainment and that pretty much puts a stop to the spread of their genes. So uh, I actually always let these guys go once they turn into a moth just so that they can have a little taste of freedom before they perish. feel kind of bad for them. There are some things to keep in mind when keeping jumping beans. One of which is don't keep them too warm. That's what makes them jump. The heat actually causes them to sort of spasm and they try to knock the bean into the shade by shaking about inside the hollow cavity that they create. They lightly mist their container once or twice a week, just a little bit. That allows the bean to soak up some of the water so that the grub inside can hydrate itself. They are very prone to dehydration and very sensitive to heat. One of those becomes too much in either direction and these beans pretty much just become little coffins. So keep that in mind if you want to raise jumping beans. One of the things that people do with jumping beans is they race them. There's a little race track that's pretty much a circle. You place them in the middle, choose your bean, and whoever reaches the outside of the circle first wins the race. Probably not the most exciting of races, but uh, pretty sure you can find a way to bet on it. Crazy stuff though, isn't it? Anyhow, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.